Hello everybody, it's time for Join Dota League Division 2, another C game coming our way. Kingdom Wars is Insidious Idol and to be honest, I was kinda baffled about the lobby because there was some weird stuff going on. There's there has been casters with fake names as like Vershuta, LD Dota, uh plays from Dota Talk, everything. Like some fake names. Uh, to be honest, I think someone leaked the password but the admin didn't really notice, so I try to fix it, but in the end, it does matter if both teams kind of agree. Who knows? Either way, this is Division 2. Two Singaporean uh, teams going against each other, and there, the draft is already on the way. My name is Heflamok, I'm from Hefla TV. Yes, I'm actually casting myself, so I made myself quite rare in the last couple days, weeks, whatsoever, because I was busy managing all the time, but now. Or oh, actually, yesterday I was already casted on Hafla TV 2. Today I reclaimed my number one channel here, Hafla TV 1, and it's not the only game. Like, this is just a small intermezzo before we go into Gigabyte Challenge today later. Plus, of course, um, the Tag Labs is coming as well. As well, uh, I think another JD game, Division 1, is coming away. So, I think today I'll be casting about 12 hours or 13 or 14 hours. Hafla TV 2 will also have like a, a 10 hour schedule, whatsoever. Pretty much from now till late in the night, uh, you can watch nice Dota here on Hafla TV. Either way, I'm glad you're all here. And let's look at the draft. It's already. Good on the way. We have the second ban rotation already coming out. The first one is not surprising, actually. I mean, Lycan is absolutely standard. Invoker, Batrider, super standard. Nothing surprising there. But the Queen of Pain is coming out. Seriously, I haven't seen Queen of Pain picked or banned in. I have no idea how many thousand hours of casting already. Like, before 6.8, I actually had the last time. A Queen of Pain, but well, sure, <laughs> she's banned, so she can't get picked. Not that she would get picked, but either way, second yeah. ban rotation is out Wiper, Ember, Void, and the Doom. Well, that's definitely interesting because look at the picks we have Ancient Apparition and Puck. Um, so I kind of don't understand the Doom ban, I rather would have ha had it picked. But on the other side, we have Rubik as a first pick. That's also a first I see, to be honest. I've never seen a Rubik, I've seen Rubik already in a second pick, but as a first one. That's definitely interesting. What I like, of course, is the Rave King being picked. Like, I like him as a support or as a carry. I don't really care about that. Mirana, well, there's some nice synergy with the Rubik together, of course. We have the tele Telekinesis into the arrow. And now, the fourth pick is a Tinker. So, well, Tinker, I guess we're going to see him mid. Or, I don't know, I've also seen a Division 2 uh, team actually going for some Tinker stacking the, uh, stacking the jungle or going for the Ancients, but I pretty much doubt that this is gonna happen here. Either way, so the Tinker is gonna be mid, and this is a lot of burst damage coming Puck's way. He has to be really swift with his phase shift there, and he has to really care, because Tinker, like, the laser spam is quite annoying. I'm, I'm a Tinker player myself, so, yep, yeah, it's, it's definitely fun against the Puck in the mid, but then again, also the Puck should be able to do quite something against the Tinker. I mean, the Orb Harass will come out, both will definitely bottle crow, and then with the waning rift, he might actually get a small window opportunity there to get even a first blood on the Tinker because Tinker, as well as Puck's HP pool, pretty low. So the new two picks coming out here for Kingdom: Center Warrunner and the Sand King. So they secure themselves two stuns. Both of them, or actually, if you even take the the Puck there in the equation, so there's three heroes that would require a Plink Dagger. At least it is pretty much a core item for all three of them. And I don't know how fast Kingdom is going to get them up. That's pretty much the question. I mean, a Sand King can live without a Plink Dagger for quite a while. But, I mean, Center Warrior and Puck, they definitely need one. And, yep, the Brewmaster getting more and more popular. And I absolutely love it. Brewmaster, the fifth pick here for Insidious Idol. So, we have an early um, ultimate coming out. And those Brewlings, they definitely hurt on level 6 Brewmaster. Like we even seen it, seen it in the in the last couple of hours, we had the Chinese qualifiers of the TI, and they're also Brewmaster. He's getting more and more into the scene, and I don't th I don't think we're gonna see any change there. Like the Brewmaster is definitely a nice pick because I don't know till mid game he's easy. The only th really the only bad thing is then later if the right leaks get really really heavy, those Brewlings die pretty fast, 
and the problem is Brewmaster is still dying when all the uh, Brewlings are going down. We actually saw a game like a week ago where we had a Sven and as soon as that Sven popped BKB and his ultimate plus his cleave plus of course he had crit. I think he already had a Daedalus finished as well. So he was just chewing through the Brewlings and yeah that was definitely not well the way it should be. Either way the fifth bands are coming out. It's a Dream Protector. Well a pick or rather a bun that always has to happen simply because too many teams now play the Dream Protector, protect their towers, rotate in to defend them, heal them back up and this is all the gold you're missing there. On the other side, well, they go for a Spectra ban which is understandable because Kingdom, they have yet to pick a core, a proper agility hero I guess that could carry the entire thing because right now, of course, they're kind of fight heavy, uh, fight heavy. I mean team fight it's definitely nice. Ice Blast, two initiations, three initiations rather. They have a nice mag magical burst. And now they kind of need the right click power if this game goes later. Oh, and three. it's going to be a Morphling. Well, not too bad of a choice actually. Because that Morphling, I don't know, the Tinker definitely is going to consider twice if he's going for uh, a shotgun himself there. Because if the Morphling has it there and there's additional targets up, then the second adaptive strike could come into that. So, yeah. But the problem with the Morphling is he has to get online. And, well, how fast he's going to get that online, that's the big question. They have to pretty much babysit all the time. But let's see. Oh, the admin is actually saying rehosting. Okay, so we go for fast rehost then. It is. Just a second, this shouldn't take too long. Actually, he will host a new lobby, new password, and then should we should be on the way. But I definitely like it. I mean, the drafts are crazy, and this is going to be a really, really interesting game. Like, it's, it's typical. Division 2 games are always interesting. So, let's see. It's not posted yet. But I'm not going to play any music or any waiting screen. This should be up in just a second. And... There we go. And we just have to wait for the players to join in and then it should be easy going because yeah, it's gonna be AP, that means they all have the heroes anyway, so it's all good I guess. Now, yeah, the first team already received the password. And now let's see, with a new password, because we had a problem with the older lobby, someone, for some reason, leaked the password, I guess, in, in some group or whatever, and there were some random people joining in, trying to grab a ticket, or, I don't know, fake casters, whatsoever. But now, yeah, it all should be fine now. I hope at least. By the way, since I'm solo casting, you can also write something in, in chat. I always try to, to answer that when I'm solo casting, like interacting with a couple of views, make it more uh, interesting. So yeah, if you have any question about Hafla Timi, or myself, Hafla Mog, or anything else, or what else we're going to cast, or anything similar, then yeah, just go for it. So now I think we have, yep, 10 players are in. Now the question is who is that unassigned players, the team flags are coming, and now oh, the old players are yeah just kick them and start there we go this time it worked and we're back on track ready to just pick the heroes and we see like, it's quite interesting though because I have no idea how they're gonna lane this I mean the morphling is gonna end up probably in a safe lane but I'm really curious who's going uh, mid there against the tinker do they change something do they really put, uh, put the puck there um, maybe they even gonna support him a bit with a dual lane. We're gonna see that often, especially like if you get a heavy counter pick in mid, then sometimes the support is required. 
I mean, the Tinker is kind of vulnerable at the start. Then again, they don't have anything that like has the range. Like, if the Mirana was on the other side for Kingdom, they could, of course, fish with the arrow against the Tinker. That would work out. The problem is, yeah, they only have like the Burrow Strike, which is level 1, and therefore the range is super low. Like, also, Centaur can't get there unless he finds a Haste Rune or something, or maybe even Invisibility Rune. So that Tinker should be quite safe in the mid, unless there is really some rune luck whatsoever going on. And now, yep, all 10 players picked a hero in the remake, so it's all good. I always hate that. Like, when you rehearse a match, then it actually has to take this cooldown, guys. You see here, like, it has to take down, like, not... Usually, I don't know why Valve doesn't make it, like, whenever you picked your 10 heroes, you should just instantly go in the game. No, it has to, like, tick down, and now, yeah, they're picking all the heroes. I should have the correct overlay in there, I think. Yes, it looks good. You can just swap, actually, to my default HUD. There we go. Yep. And now, there is a courier, which is actually looking pretty funny. Like, I've never seen this one before, but I absolutely like it. Either way, going for a fast team introduction here. On the Dire side, we have Kingdom here. Smashy is playing the Ancient Apparition. We have Yumu Kom Konpaku <laughs> on the Sand King. Interesting name. We have Rin here on the Morphling. And, well, Tudi or Tudi is playing the Santa Warner. And who did I miss? Yes, here in the mid. Uh, fixes. Is playing the puck and yes he's gonna be mid starting with null talisman for the right clicks to share tango so this is gonna be a bottle rush i don't know it's pretty i mean yes i like the null talisman of course getting the dcs up there for a bit more damage and everything but also this means a longer way to the bottle so leaving the nose talismans out then going directly for the bottle is maybe better against the tinker now we actually see both of them here rushing towards the rune and the first hit is a crit on the panda the panda actually yeah he he's skilled drunken brawler so there was no thunderclap whatsoever coming out and sand can actually take in some harass damage he has to use the tango and now going for the faster introduction here of the other team and this is shaga Saros on the Brewmaster. In the mid we have Chu and the try line here is gonna be Yatsin. Then Mirana is played by Isera and last but not least it's Shred. But I don't think any one of them is actually standing so those standing tags they were just given randomly out. And now yeah we are back in the or oh, pretty much back on track here. The creeps they met and now we're gonna see how it's gonna develop. It's on both sides, Trilane versus a solo, and it's actually a nice setup here. The Brewmaster being, oh god, and there's already the Burrow Strike and the Chilling Touch coming out. This is a lot of damage, and this should be enough for a first blood. Yeah, Kingdom securing themselves a first blood, but on the other side, exactly the same happens to the Center Warner. So in the end, a small advantage there for Kingdom, simply because they got the first blood. So this is more gold their way but in the end experience wise it's pretty much the same it's just a gold difference and yeah Brumaster instantly back and the centaur actually he chooses to run he wants to save all the money while the panda choose to like rather yep go for a tp to not miss any xp out there as an offliner which is maybe not the worst choice and now we already see it he actually goes for a march of the machines build this is definitely interesting because that leaves the puck pretty much dominating the lane only level 1 laser, which is like a nice harass whatsoever. The problem is, it's not enough damage to actually get something up on the puck. The puck has now 600 gold. That means in 50 gold, he's gonna have his bottle, and from there, well, it's definitely gonna be interesting. And he's actually using this March of the Machine here in the lane to harass, and well, the angle he chose there, this is quite painful for the puck level 2, bringing him down to like 50%, so he can only hope. One more CS, there it comes, the bottle will bot in a second, and yeah, the courier is on the way with the bottle. How does the courier look when he walks? This looks hilarious, it's a chest on feet pretty much. But now, we have a very interesting rotation here, because he's hasted up, and now he's trying to get that stun on the puck, but he's probably... Oh my god, there was the face shift, but he's actually getting stunned now, the orb away, but Roshan, Roshan is actually hitting him, and now, is he suiciding to Roshan? No, he's not, the Rave King is actually getting killed 
by the projectile of the tower so he was too long under the tower and in the end the puck is getting away with 40 hp being the lucky one i think he was even in an xp range for that because he's level four well four and a half oh, i think he was out of xp range for that kill either way definitely interesting kingdom now <laughs> leading with 2-1 Oh yeah, and a viewer is asking who's those stannins on. I don't. I think those stannin ticks there, like those tags, they're still bugged. Like Valve didn't fix it yet, so sometimes you have the entire team uh, marked as stannins, but they're not actually stannins. As far as I can tell from the lobby chat and everything, there's no stannins whatsoever. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's a, a real stannin somewhere across the teams. But sorry, those teams are a bit too unknown that I actually know their roster by heart. I mean, this is a Division 2 game, so my, my knowledge on them is quite limited. I I always hope that th some of those Division 2 uh, teams actually make it and like establish something. Maybe even go into Division 1 whatsoever, but yeah, you never know. Some of them disband, some of them actually remain, or the players, they go together in a, in a better team. But either way, back to the game. The Tinker actually, he's looking at the 4 minute rune and he's not gonna find it like the Rave King is gonna be more successful there. Finding an illusion rune so he's giving up, coming back to the lane at the moment. Well, they're both pretty similar in level when it comes to CS. The Tinker, well the Tinker has 14 and 1 and the Puck has 19 and 5 so Puck definitely ahead now in the mid even though he had to make this turn and go back to base at Roshan so he was leading by quite a lot at the start but now with the march of the machine spam I mean you're pushing your lane out that's of course the downside but then again also Puck he can't right click or CS here whatsoever but still he managed here and there a deny which is pretty annoying for the Tinker of course we are 4 of soon five minutes into the game and it's only 2-1 both teams relatively passive they also didn't try to go for the pan panda yet but now actually with the barrel strike it is level 2 level 1 sandstorm to be honest like if this sand king is gonna ding level 4 then I'm pretty sure he wants to go in the jungle and farm the stacks up actually we have a dual stack here but this one is used to pull to the side and so far I don't think we have any other stack no we have to check the jungle Nope, there's nothing else has been stacked, so he should start stacking, but he rather does the small pull just to get the lane a bit back. I guess a good choice, but I mean as soon as you have the level 2 sandstorm, you can just go farm jungle, get your dagger fast up, and then with the surprise dagger, maybe even the first epicenter when you're already level 6 from the jungle, then that's definitely a huge chunk of damage coming um, in City's idol, Idol's way here. And now, yep, they farm the side camp. And that's pretty much it. The Morphling at the moment doing quite well. He's pretty much leading uh, the CS, but only pretty much because he has won the night more than the Mirana. Mirana actually now taking over the lead, and she's doing quite well. She already finished her face boots. Like, the Ring of Basilus as like a standard starter item. The Rubik, well, the Rubik is still here in the lane. He's there pretty much just to harass the center out. And to be honest, I like it a bit more what they do, because like... Experience wise, oh, I think we have a go. Do we have a go? No, we don't have a go. This Rave King, I mean, he's showing himself in the mid. He also has a smoke, but oh well. Now we have a, actually a burst strike here on the panda, but it's nothing more but harass. But it's not too much harass because you can't even get right clicks after that. Like, this two points in Drunken Crawl already, it's so ridiculous the dodge chance. Like, the miss chance on a, on a panda, it's just insane. It's It's absolutely insane. Like especially then then later if you get like the drunken haze like if you combine it like the missions on that plus of course the drunken brawler like percentage of percentage scaling it's it's you pretty much can't hit them that's why we see whenever panda is actually getting through the draft we see heroes like for example the marana going pretty early even mkb as the first damage item under normal circumstances oh actually oh we have a burrow strike here on the tinker is the puck there to follow up the puck actually getting so much damage just by the ancients but the tinker he's protected now by the moonlight shadow but <laughs> nice one this sandstorm actually protected him not anymore but the sand king will pay for that so in the end both going down the puck going down the sand king going down just for a tinker kill i mean the kill was nice because it was with sandstorms it was a very very slow and painful death in the dream coil but then again both dying for it nice rotations here by insidious idol both actually leaving the lane and that that leaves actually the, the rave king 
getting some experience finally. I mean, he's gonna ding level 4 now. Maybe he's getting level 5 before anyone else is rotating in. But then again, the Sand King is already coming. Maybe you're gonna have a Hoof Stomp. Did he already see him? Oh, and the Hoof Stomp, it didn't come out in time, so he actually makes it out and also Mirana is now on her way with a nice arrow they might find the setup but it has to be pretty much on the SK because Santa Warren is a bit too tanky I mean he got like 900 HP already they might want to go for it though like there oh there's the hoofstone but the arrow actually missing the Sand King directly and now there is probably no there's no Star Storm whatsoever oh my god the maximum arrow and two points into leap zero Star Storm this pretty much cost him the kill there I mean, level 1 leap is mostly enough, and picking like 2 points in Star Storm is a nice junk of burst. Especially here, he would have gotten probably the second hit on the Sand King. It was a long duration in the stun, so this might have been the difference in a kill. So, yeah, in the end, we are 8 minutes in, <laughs> and it's 6 6, and quite some interesting plays and interesting like skill builds coming out now. A burst strike off the Sand King actually missing on the Mirana. She just turned the second before now. Okay, the center we're not trying to be a bit aggressive, but Mirana is pretty swift, especially with face boots. It's hard to actually get in position there without any blink dagger whatsoever in the mid. Well, we have to compare it. It's 34 on the Tinker. So far, he didn't start or go again to the Ancients. The Ancients, well, they're stacked. I think this is... Yeah, this is triple stack. This is two golems, but now we have a stampede going out, and I think they want to go for the Mirana, and it is enough. But the problem is there is the Rave King, so they get the return kill, a one-one trade under the tower, and the Rave King is gonna be happy because he, with that creep, or with the next one, now this creep should be enough. He should be level six, yes, and therefore reincarnation is up. This is absolutely needed. I mean, the problem is his mana pool is not too great. So at the moment, if he casts two Ray Fire Blast, it's not enough uh, mana left for his ultimate. So he can only cast one, then he has to die or either survive. So he definitely needs some mana pool. But in the meantime, we have Panda actually going aggressive versus the Ancient Apparition. Too bad there's no uh, follow-up whatsoever. Like maybe a Burst Strike there would have made a difference with Chilling Touch. They could have gotten him down before he goes into his ultimate but the fact is the panda is level 7 that's definitely a decent level for an offliner and this means that panda ultimate will come out pretty soon the rubik as well is already level 6 now he actually stole replicate okay it's not the best spell to steal the wave would have been better as like a magical burst but i guess it's better than nothing right it's he freshly dinged level 6 there so why not Now actually we have Moonlight Shadow coming out and this Moonlight Shadow is, yeah, this is for top, but they're directly under a sentry wall so everybody is gonna see that Morphling is already heading back, but what is the Sand King doing? Like he saw that, oh they used dust and now they go for it, there's a stun here on the Rubik, Rubik is already dead, but now the Panda Ultimate is coming out, Mirana is getting the last hit here on the SK, but look at it. The Rave King joined the entire fight. Rave Fire Blast is already out and he actually dies because he has no mana whatsoever for his reincarnation. Now Rubik actually, he is back and now the Morphling actually goes down. Rubik, oh my god, he's doing so much work and now the Hoof Stomp has to come out now. It actually comes out but it's pretty much too late. Oh my god, this double edge would have killed the Rubik but he didn't get it off. The Puck, super low. Maybe he wants to get that orb damage on the Rubik but instead, no my god, now he's actually in danger himself. But a Burst Strike on the Mirana and again he's missing it. He's getting a lot of damage from the Thunderclap but there's no vision whatsoever. The arrow in the end is gonna finish him so this time the level 4 arrow doing work. So, I don't know, in the end this was a crazy trade, fourth and back, like, how many, did they actually use the buybacks there as well? This was one buyback on the Rubik because he was instantly back and the other one was a normal, uh, the normal one, and Rubik actually dying from the Ice Blast of the Ancient Apparition here in the base, so rest in peace. So, nice one. In the end, Kingdom is securing one more kill, making it 8-7 at the 12th minute. And I think it's time to look at the graphs. Let's see how we are. So far, in CD's idol, well, they're doing fine in experience, of course. Uh, they have, like, this one kill advantage now, and the other one, of course, out of experience range, so whatsoever. So we have 2k advantage here for in CD's idol. When it comes to gold, well... Kingdom was leading all the way, but now it pretty much flatlined, and yeah, this is pretty much a plus minus null uh, graph, and yeah, 
the next fight or maybe decide Roshan Kingdom is gonna secure some more gold for them. This is the advantage they have to use. I mean, being on the dire side, having the Roshan advantage, this is definitely something they need. We see the Mirana now. Well, Aquila is finished, the face boots are already mentioned, and well, this is gonna be drums on the Mirana, so she's gonna be pretty swift. The Tinker, I guess, well, he's pretty much online because he has now Bottle and Soaring. This is all you need. From now on, you can pretty much just TP around wherever you want. The Ancients, well, he's still farming them. I guess one of the supports should stack them, but they are busy smoking up here. And I think they're heading top. Yes, the Brewmaster is ready. The Brewmaster Ultimate is there. The Primal Spread would be ready. I guess they can't kill the Morph alone, especially if Morph is having the Replicate. But Replicate is now on cooldown 50 seconds. An easier kill would be, of course, the AA, but they have to get in range for it, of course. This smoke has been used very early, so I don't even know if they reach it. But now I think the Morphling might... Oh, give some vision on the panda. The panda is scouting out. There is a nice observer ward, of course, giving vision in the side. Problem is panda. He would need like a blink dagger to get close to the ancient apparition, slowing him. Then Ruby can come in. Problem is smoke was running out, and now this, yeah, this observer ward. There are the blinks. They know there's three people here. Now we have an ice blast flying. The ice blast is for the Mirana. That's a nice pause. You're gonna see here the projectile. And that was a really short pass, but oh my god, he he leaped almost in the ice blast, but that damage wasn't even needed. Just with the double edge and of course dream coil or waning rift damage, that was just enough. There is actually three rotations, four rotations coming in, but they didn't they didn't stay. They just wanted the Mirana kill and headed out, which is probably the wisest choice they can go for. The puck actually TP'd mid and. Well, he's getting an invisibility rune, which is very dangerous to be honest. He's gonna bottle that for a couple seconds, waiting for the other Dream Coil, and that's a nice setup for him. So he can go for multiple raining rift whatsoever. Now we actually have an ice blast flying bottom here, so they definitely gonna get that ice blast here. But in the meantime, Kingdom, he they are trading at the moment two towers for one, which is I guess good because in the mid, oh my God, he's missing that. He's missing that last hit, and top they also missed the last hit, so that's kind of precious gold uh, lost on the Morphling there, as well as the Sand King, who would be happy to get his dagger. We just saw an arrow flying here in the mid. Well, Mirana just saying hello. The Puck being invisible, but now the March of the Machines. Look at how fast his HP dropped. This is the danger, and now he's just spamming his rockets, going back. And maybe there's another arrow. Yes, there is another arrow, but it's also gonna miss. I guess it's worth a try. Now, what do we have a go? Maybe oh, the ice blast is completely missing, and this this invisibility rune only has a couple seconds left. And maybe they start something in the mid, but now the problem is the puck is gonna see three people, four people actually in front of the tier one tower, and now he has to initiate. There's the waning rift. Oh my god! But he's just going for the orb waning rift combination, and then just using his orb to get out. He didn't use the dream coil. I guess. It would have been worth to get the kill there on the Rave King just to get his ultimate down. But I don't know. Now the Tinker is actually the one using the bottle charge on the Rave King and then TPing back. I actually like that. So the Tinker being like a mobile supply of mana and HP, but Moonlight Shadow has been used to morph. Actually using here like replicate on him oh, on himself there. Oh no, actually no, this is oh, what am I saying? There was no second marker on his head, so this wasn't a replica, this was just a normal illusion from the rune, but for some reason they, either they didn't see it or they didn't want to go for it. The fact is, they're all 5 in mid, so I gonna, I guess we're gonna see some pushing action, but oh, there's a barrel strike on 1 at least. The Ice Pass is gonna connect on 2, but the Sand King is already going down, but the Puck is coming in, 2 are down. But the problem is the Tinker, oh my god, Tinker already low, and oh my god, 3 are down. The Rave King, of course, respawning. And, well, he's trying to hide, he's trying to get out, there is no mana left for the hoof stomp. And yeah, in the meantime, we also saw the Morphling getting the kill here on the Rubik that tried to run away. So in the end, well, we had pretty much uh, a nice trade for Kingdom. They secured him a nice lead, and this Mirana is gonna die as well, which makes it at 9-12. And this is a huge increase in XP and gold, of course, for Kingdom. They look much more routine. Now, of course, Rave King coming back, but the Blink Dagger is up on the center runner, and uh, he's dying a second time. All he did was just giving one Rave Fire Blast out, and that's pretty much it. So, 
The TPs are coming back though. Tinker is going for the rockets. Well, the rockets are at level 4. The laser damage is kind of missing, but it's definitely enough to push them back. This is the horror for each and every team that tries to capitalize on something. If the Tinker is still alive, like March of the Machines around the towers, it just keeps you away. Like, you have to have a lot of HP, a lot of region or lifesteal whatsoever to keep yourself, like, on a decent HP pool with a Tinker or standing in March of the Sh Machines. If there's like two patches of March of the Machines, there's no way you're gonna push into this. And now they're back in the mid. It's kind of deja vu because they're again free here in the mid. There's one coming in the background. Yeah, it's Mirana. And yeah, Kingdom. They're pretty much regen up and everything. And they can just rinse and repeat that. Oh, and there we go already. The Puck is coming in. The Stampede as well used in the Panda going down again before he can actually do something. Now Rubik is the one who's maybe dying, but, well, he's getting a lot of damage. Adaptive Strike, yep, plus, of course, the Ice Blast debuff on him. That was enough. Mirana, okay, he's up here, and, yeah, they won't get the stun. Sento is trying to. He's blinking in, but not enough. So, free down for Insidious C again, and, yeah. To be honest, the only thing that keeps them in the game right now is this March of the Machine. That's really the only thing why Kingdom didn't take another tier 2 tower. And I think after these two horrible fights for Insidious Idol, we have to look at the crafts again and look at this. Kingdom now securing them like 7,500 experience lead, as well as 3k gold advantage. I mean, the good thing is the Tinker is TPing around now. He's getting really mobile. We have to see what else he got. Yeah, the Plink Dagger is finished, as well as like 1,300 gold on top of that. That's quite some nice farm actually for the Tinker because I had the impression the mid was not going as well as he may have expected. Now actually the Tinker going in there is Moonlight Shadow up as well. I think this Moonlight Shadow is for the mid but oh my god the Puck actually TP'd in. He, wanted, he, he, just, he just wanted to get Waning Rift orb damage out there but this nice Sentry Ward and a, and a super swift reaction of the Rubik made this one possible but now Okay, the Tinker blinking to the side, but Morphling, well, he doesn't even try to. So, Insidious Idol. Everything but out of the game. They secured himself an important kill on that puck. I think that was, yeah, a killing spree. 442 to the Brewmaster. But this Brewmaster, he definitely needs something. He needs more HP because the last two fights... Oh my god, he's actually going for it with his Blink Dagger. Now he's going for the Ancient Apparition, and this Ancient Apparition is so dead. I mean, there's an Ice Blast, but what is he doing? I mean, the Ice Blast doesn't really bring anything on the Brewlings. You're not gonna get them out anyway. I mean, down anyway, without any follow-up. So, Sand King is rotating in now. Oh my god. He actually stopped the Replicate there from coming in, so the Morph can't just come. Sento trying to get something with the Blink Dagger. Maybe a Hoofstone looking for anything, but he won't find anything. So, 11-15. Tinker is still split pushing, doing a really nice job. What is he buying next? Okay, he's buying a point booster. Do we actually see a Ghanem's Tinker? I love it. Absolutely hilarious. So, a Ghanem Scepter. That means more range on the laser and uh, a higher heat seeking missile count. I guess it's nice, especially it's nice for defending because if you're high ground, you have vision on the low ground. They try to get in, March, the, March of the Machines is rolling, as well as the heat seeking missiles and the long range laser. That's the funny part. With our Gunham Scepter, you have such a long range on that laser, it's, it's pretty much like a, a semi heat seeking missile. It's quite some nice magical burst coming out there. And yeah, they can definitely defend very well with this. So t this Tinker, he has to be initi uh, initiated on. Otherwise, I don't see how Kingdom is going to defend this. But th this initiation is dangerous. We just saw it mid. Now there's an Ice Pass flying. Pretty old school. And there, the Burrow Strike is going to secure that he is in it. There is no ultimate up for him. So he will just go down. They even used the Epicenter. But it, I think it wasn't even needed. They would have gotten enough right click after the double edge. And the Puck is actually finding the Marana. There is a level 1 Dagon. But the level 1 Dagon was not enough. There's, oh my god. A really, really close arrow. And the Rubik coming in there. As well as the Tinker. Like, they get the kill. So Puck... This was just a bit too greedy, making it in the end a 1-1 trade, but Puck, you need at least level 2 Dagon to kill that Marana, like, well, I mean, look at it, she got 1000 HP, so all waning rift, it's just not enough with only level 1 Dagon together. 
Now, let's see Tinker. I mean, Tinker is still split pushing, and that's that's what I like the most about it. He's also pretty swift on his shift click, dagger, whatever. He already chose to go for rearm level 2, which is kind of standard as soon as you have the first item that boosts your mana pool. If, if you use it earlier, sometimes we see Tinkers actually keeping the rearm uh, level 1 to level 14 because it's just more mana efficient as well as you don't really need the faster rearm unless you're fighting. If you're really just split pushing then the normal cast is enough. But I, I guess now it's kind of needed because we have already the Blink Dagger on the center Warner. We have to look at the Sand King. He got it as well. 300 gold on top of it and of course the Puck got it as well. I talked about it already in the draft. Like those three heroes they need the Blink Dagger desperately and now they got it up which means so Kingdom is pretty much done with their calls. Everything else they have to boost now is of course their burst damage which is gonna come from Puck and the Morphling. He needs a lot more time though. That's that's the biggest problem. The Lincoln Sphere is finished. He's working on the next tower. With Aquila he pretty much started. The Midas was yep, yeah, it was a nice rush. It came out pretty timely, I have to say. And of course it's rolling for a long time, giving him a nice advantage. Look at the hero levels at the moment. Kingdom. They have the first two level 14 heroes and it is Puck and Morphling. The one following up is of course the Tinker and now I like what they do. They smoke here because they know someone will rotate in. It is the Tinker. Ah, oh, the problem is they use Stampede but oh my god Tinker. He had his rearm through so the second Plink Dagger coming their way. Now they have to go back. There's a Burst Strike through the trees as well as a Plink out by the center Warner of course so but Oh my god, there's a Moonlight Shadow and the Brewmaster almost found the SK. I mean, SK has all the means to go away. They also have no detection whatsoever. There's a Rubik. Well, Rubik tried something, but the problem is... Oh my god, nice one. Like, if this... If this wouldn't have led to a kill, then this arrow flying his way there. The only reason this arrow didn't hit was because the Brewmaster was slowing him with the Thunderclap. So, nice aiming there with the arrow, I have to say. So, so far I'm actually quite happy with this Mirana. She's doing a good job so far. Like, she survived in situations where I thought, like, she will never survive. So Tinker, Tinker actually now getting really, really cocky and I was absolutely wrong. This is a soul booster. Soul booster Tinker. Okay. I didn't see this one coming at all. Like I expected the Arganim Scepter. It wouldn't be the first time I've seen the Arganim Scepter on ITZ in uh, in a game and it's definitely viable. It's it's especially nice in team fights with a lot of targets, which we've seen so far. The soul booster into Bloodstone, uh, I don't know. Now <laughs> look at this. He's really getting cocky. He should be careful though, because that morphling at some point you will just say like Tinker, no no, you, you're not gonna be so cocky here with me. We have a haste rune on the Wraith King, but it's already fading before I can even announce it. He's not gonna find or do anything with it. And so far, I don't know, it's the game kinda cooled down a bit. We have an Ice Blast flying here, but I don't know where and how he predicted it, but he wanted to get that Mirana, plus of course the Puck damage. Now Puck actually coming up. There's no Waning Rift, no Orb damage, nothing is connected on the Mirana. He's getting just one more CS and now maybe he's looking for the Puck, maybe for the arrow. Puck is absolutely cancelled and there is a phase shift and a blink into the trees but maybe the Panda is making the right call and he actually did the right call. Absolutely amazing. He blinked in there, he expected the Puck to be here and nice. The Thunderclap damage as well as of course the heat seeking missile, just one click, pretty much one click was uh, required to get this kill. Absolutely love it. And now, let's see. I mean, the Sand King is at the side. Oh, is he gonna? Oh, this Tinker also blinking there. He's getting a full time arrow, and he saw that. Like, this was just two right clicks needed there in the end. The funny thing is, the Tinker is getting the kill there, even with just. I think that was March of the Machines killing him there. And at the same time, Tinker, now finally it worked. The Stampede also has been used. The Tinker was really too greedy. Instead of going back to base and then TPing somewhere, he was trying to do something and just defend that tier 2 tower. He goes down to the Morphling, the hero you should feed the least. That's, I don't know. The Morphling is the one who can get Kingdom in a really nice position now. He's actually back and the question is, do they go for something? There's an Ice Blast flying, but yeah, it's not going to connect on anything. Or actually it connected on the Rubik, but 
he was full HP. So the Tinker actually having a nice respawn time, of course, because of the Bloodstone. But the problem is, I don't know, he has six charges, so yeah. He didn't have that Bloodstone ready for the Sand King, I think. Let's see if he loses those stacks, because so far I just don't see him gaining too much. Because, I don't know, he himself doesn't have too much burst damage apart from what the hero brings. Because he has no Dagon whatsoever, and to be honest, I think... No, it's Dagon next. He's not going for the Hex build or anything like that. He is actually going for the Dagon. Okay, absolutely interesting, I like it. Now, the Brewmaster with the Invisibility Rune. He's scouting out a bit, but there is some blinks. I have no idea if they mean the Brewmaster or if they just saw him taking the rune. I mean, yes, there is an Observer Ward, so they know he's around somewhere, but they have a gem. That's why they didn't pop anything else, I was wondering. Yeah, but with the gem on the Ancient Apparition, they knew exactly. Yep, let him come, we just get him. The problem with the Brewmaster is Primal Spread. It will buy him a lot of time and also time for the team to just rotate in and do something against it, like against another team just tr like trying to pursue those rulings. Plus of course he has two stuns, he has uh, the Cyclone there he can use so I don't know, chasing a Brewmaster in Primal Spread is always painful but now we see actually free here and Morphling, no actually not joining so free trying to go for a gank train, Ancient Aberration is still there the ultimate is ready, oh my god, Did, do they see the Rubik? I mean Rubik definitely saw them there's the blink coming out, so in the end they know there's at least 3 or 4. The panda, well the panda has to be careful. It's not the first time he would die in the waning rift. And oh god, Rubik is so boxed in, but he's he doesn't choose to uh, go wide. And I just thought the puck for a second is checking out that corner. That would have been really bad for him. I mean the puck would have died for sure, but now they rotate in sooner or later. This is gonna be all disjointed here by the sandstorm. And now the first shotgun we see in the game and it is gonna meet the Rubik. And now there's stuns here on the Morphling. The Morphling actually, he first he went into agility, now he's into Morph, that means he survives for a while. There is the wave ready, he's still alive but the Brueling is doing so much damage now. He's actually trying to wave out and he has to run. There is a stun here by the Santa Warrior that Hoofstorm is actually gonna save the life of the Morphling. But the epicenter doing so much damage but he's killing himself there because the second time Batman was up and he has a like now a BKB triggered that means the puck well he has to definitely care I mean the thunderclap nope it's not coming out oh but the laser rocket and of course thunderclap damage this is absolutely enough to get the kill but even worse the gem was fed now here by the AA this was a horrible fight for kingdom because that Rubik it's, it's got he's, he's got it out everything so this wasn't a surprise at all. I was only surprised by the fact that, well, the Rubik sh showed up there too early, I think, so the Morphling choose him as a shotgun target. Instantly went down, but I think, was that a Rubik buyback? I'm not quite sure, but I think this was a Rubik buyback, because he was really fast back in the fight, and now actually, okay, we have the Morphling looking for something, but, oh my god, is he gonna find that Tinker? If the Tinker TPs at I don't know, at the wrong to the wrong side on the wrong trees and the Wolfling is waiting there with the shotgun at after strike. That would be horrible for the Tinker because Tinker, well 1600 HP, he actually got quite a lot of HP. So shotgun alone wouldn't be enough. He needs additional right clicks. And if the Tinker for example I don't know. He's going for a Dagon build. Level 2 is now up on him. I, I just don't like the, the Dagon choice but then again, he can burst down SK, AA, and the puck pretty much instantly with with laser, heat seeking missile. The problem is the SK, of course, he can disjoint a lot because he has, of course, the sandstorm. The puck has the phase shift. The only one who actually falls victim to it is the ancient apparition. He's the one who can't do anything. But then again, in a team fight, all you need is that ancient apparition hitting at least a couple of heroes. So the debuff is up. They're not healing whatsoever, and they might actually shatter from all the damage going on in the fight. After that, he can pretty much die. Unless the fight is, of course, going that long. That, yeah, you might go for a second one. And now, actually, the puck was trying to get the Tinker. He, he blinked to the side, but he didn't use stream coil there. He just used the orb. I guess he was hesitating because he wasn't sure how long that TP was going for the Tinker. But this Tinker has to die. <laughs> now Ice Blast also looking for the Tinker, but he's like, okay, you Ice Blast? I'm like, okay, I just blink out of it.
Yeah, I'm just reading the chat now. Yeah, Tinker, Aganems, or Bloodstone. Like, uh, for those who have been here the first minute on, I actually thought it's gonna be a Ghanem Scepter, but he decided to go for a Bloodstone, which is a decision I don't support. I mean, I like the fact that he's, of course, getting stacks at the moment. He has been part in a couple kills there. Also, the team fight was going definitely his way. So he's fast back in respawn. He can also suicide um, in a team fight that might actually be like some sort of important difference in the later fights. But I don't know, the Ghanem Scepter. Would have been definitely an interesting choice for all-out fight, and well, I have actually no idea how to comment Bloodstone on a Tinker. It's it's a very it's it's the first time I've actually seen a Tinker with a Bloodstone in uh, in a tournament game whatsoever. But at the moment, it's working out. He's going now with a level three Dagon, so there's a lot of burst damage, of course, coming his way. And they're just trying to find that Tinker, but he's so fast and swift all over the map. Also really fast on the blinks. I mean, look at that. He really just does one instant cast and just TPing out. Finding him, making the right guess in which trees he's hiding, that's the hard part for Kingdom. And at the moment, they can't really get a hold on the Tinker. And since the Tinker is pushing everything like pretty much beyond the river line, they have the opportunity to farm the entire jungles, including Ancients whatsoever. But now... Kingdom tries to take the initiative. They have a smoke and, well, maybe they're going to find something here in mid. I mean, there's the Rave King, there's the Panda. Maybe they managed to get the Panda down before there's anything. But now, the Rave King here being in the front lines, that means they have to kill him twice. Plus, they get a lot of damage because he's going to activate that Plate Mail. We saw that the last fight, he had actually twice a Plate Mail in that fight. The first time, it already cost him a lot of HP just to get him down the first time. And the second time, he used the Plate Mail directly in the Aghanim Scepter. Now, this Observer Ward, this is perfect for the Tinker because the Heat Seeking Missiles are flying. These, these Heat Seeking Missiles, they're not just damaged, by the way. Oh, we have a Stampede being used just to disengage. That's interesting. So, yeah, the Replicate is also going to be killed. But what I tried to say is, like, yeah, those heat seeking missiles, they're not just nice for damage, they're also nice to interrupt uh, the other guy's uh, dagger cooldown. So, that's pretty much nice. And how. Oh god, the center runner tries to be in a, like a smart position, like standing here and then blinking in here, getting the hoof stump off. But the march of the machines doing so much work there. And now it's coming actually from the other side. Heat seeking missiles. Now you also know they have vision here. This is horrible. This is really horrible. Those rockets doing so much damage at the moment, and the, the Rave King just standing at the tower, dishing out some damage. The tower is, yep. Yeah, but dropping below 50%, but at the same time, Morphling, well, he got a tier 2 tower here as a trade, and Insidious Isle, they kind of cancelled their push. I think they could have gone for more, because what they did there was pretty interesting. I mean, the Morphling is going back to, to his jungle, trying to farm stuff. In the meantime, we see is there actually farming here, the Ancients. We have to look at the crafts again. Like, experience-wise, there's not much of a change for 35 minutes or 36 minutes game already. Just having like 3,000, 4,000 experience lead, it's it's not much. And when it comes to gold, well, they all lost. They lost their like 3k advantage and went 2k into Insidy Idol's way. But in the end, well, they don't have it. And now I think someone has the gem. Yes, Brewmaster has the gem. That means they got the Sentry Deny. But the problem is the Observer Ward is still standing. They need they need a ranged hero as well as Vision, of course. Now Tinker, this is actually a very interesting TP spot. But I don't know, so far, look at Kingdom at the moment, they're like stunned, they're just standing here, not doing anything. The only one who's doing anything is the Morphling, this feels to me like a bit Chinese Dota, like 2013 Chinese Dota, like four people just trying to maybe crap something here and there, and the rest is pretty much just waiting till the core for Protect 1 is doing his work and farming up. I mean, the Morphling has quite a nice chance of course to make this game. Then again, he went for the ethereal plate build, the shotgun is coming out. I guess in this game, it would have been better if he had true strike with, I don't know, then later I have studied. But, oh god, there's the shotgun already on the brewmaster. This is so much damage, as well as the epicenter now being channeled, and it's gonna hit the Rubik, as well as the Tinker. At the moment, the Moonlight Shadow is protecting them. Oh, don't tell me, no one has vision now. Okay, they got the Rave King down, but who has vision? Now they would have vision because they just picked up the gem. But the biggest problem was really like no one had dust sentries whatsoever. 
So I think they could have gotten a kill here on the Tinker as well as the Rubik if they just had vision. Now, instant smoke. So just to tell the enemy, hey, yeah, we are back. Like, you, you can safely get some CS here and then just try to bait them in. But they want to go for Roshan. The funny thing is the Mirana just did the arrow, helping them actually there, stunning Roshan. But the problem is the Wolfling waveformed into that Rosh, Rosh Pit while the arrow vision was fading. So they know exactly what's going on and there is another arrow. Oh, and it hits the Morphling. So this is quite actually quite some damage. The Urn is going to get him some HP back. And the Tinker, oh my god, the Tinker actually finds... The Ancient Apparition, so AA is going down at Panda, initiating here with the BKB on. This is really interesting, the arrow flying, but it's just stunning Roshan. And now, look at this magical burst by the Tinker, but he has to pay for it, because Morphling was there and just getting him down. Ancient Apparition is buying back, just to probably get the Ice Blast flying, and now Morphling actually got the... BKB off and the Ice Blast is only connecting on the Rubik so in the end everybody's getting out the puck is of course doing here and there some damage he could have I think he could have Dagon no it's on cooldown unfortunately it's still level 1 if he could have Dagon like with level 2 or level 3 Dagon that would have been a shutter on the Rubik but this way okay Roshan is standing they trade 1-1 one, one, and uh, Kingdom has to actually uh, use a buyback here on the ancient apparition, but the important thing is Roshan is standing. He's regenerating back up. Interesting. I have to say the least, it's interesting. I mean, we're 39 minutes in. That's much longer than I expected with this draft. But I don't know. This morphling getting more and more scary. The Tinker just had to feel it or like learn it the hard way. And there we go, Tinker. Just imagine you had any other item than this. Like I don't know, a Shiva's. For example, or a hex on the Morphling before he gets the BKB off or to get the BKB off. And I, I just feel this Bloodstone, it's its kind of useless in my opinion. Oh, a few is asking what hut is this? This one is called the OD, like Outworld Destroyer or Outworld Devourer uh, hut. And we actually choose this hut manually. Um, it's not like an official one you can buy, I think. It's one you have to program in, in your folder. Um, but it fits the nice green and everything. Fits with the Hefla TV logo. And therefore we choose it. So, sometimes I actually forget to put it on as a default HUD. But, but yeah. It's called the OD Outworld Destroyer HUD. You can see that like all the colors are chosen by this. And our logo of Hefla TV is just the same color. That's why I like it. I hope that satisfies your... Uh, Curiosity and someone is saying Plaston on Tinker is normal. No, I have to absolutely disagree. It is not normal. But here we have a hoofstomp initiation on the Pandarm. And unfortunately he's going down because he was silenced by the Venny Rift. But it continues here. All the BKBs are on and the Mirana is going for the right clicks here. But now Oh god, the Morphling is actually striking back. In the meantime, the Zanking is going down, and the first time for the Rave King, he's going down. Morphling still in pursuit of the Mirana there. The arrow actually hits and Oh my god, he's getting killed by the Tinker. Oh my god, Hoofstomp now on the Rubik. And are they trying to pursue now this center Warner? He's actually blinking out on the other side of the high crown. But Tinker was coming in just to burst the Ancient Apparition. But it was not enough. Now we actually have the Tinker here just doing some damage on the center Warner. But he got a pipe. So he has a lot of reduced damage, like at least from the magical source, so you can't really get anything. But the fact is, there's two down, and the most important one went down, it's the Morphling, without getting his Mirana kill. Maybe he should enough chase the Mirana and settle with like a kill on the Rubik or a second kill on the Wraith King. But the fact is, they can just push now, do some damage on the tier 2 tower, but actually no, with the Ice Blast, they say like, okay, it's time to go back. The Wraith King, well, he has decent... Uh, HP and mana, the Rubik as well, even after the Ice Blast ticks down. But yeah, the rotations of kingdoms were were already coming in. And this game, like the team fights, I don't know, like half of the team is always getting out. We don't see any crazy team wipes whatsoever. And no one is really capitalizing on it. Every time we have those fights, right after the fight, the maximum they do is like 5 or 10% damage on the tower. But like, this game didn't move one step forward in the past 20 minutes pretty much. I can't even remember when the last tower fell. I mean now of course they get here and there some damage on the towers but like it takes ages to actually finish this tower. Just imagine that we had a, a dream protector in this game then we would probably look at the new 
I don't know, world history. Oh my god. Actually, the Sand King, he's not trying with the Burst Strike. Is he not trying with the Burst Strike? Nope. That would have been a nice kill on the Tinker if he would have tried to. Just try with the Burst Strike to find him there in the trees. But in the end, he's just getting a buttloads of damage from the Marchman Machines. And yeah, the, at least a one viewer is agreeing with me that the Bloodstone is not normal on a Tinker. Like, to be honest, like, uh, I had the honor to cast one Tinker in 6.81, and in 6.8 I had, I don't know, I think 10 Tinkers in summary, and probably 9 of them have been in C games, and none of them had Bloodstone. And these were like the decent uh, C teams and some decent uh, uh, European or CIS teams. Other, I don't know, other teams, they're not going for it. Like, Tinker. It's not as popular as it maybe should be because I like the hero. Maybe it should have been more popular. But let's let's stop the talk about the Tinker. I mean, the Tinker so far, with or without Bloodstone, he's doing quite a decent job. I mean, he's doing a lot of hero damage. He's probably the one leading in in uh, damage dealt on heroes. And now, this is going to be a huge fight. At the moment, Kingdom is waiting here on the high ground around the secret shop. The tower is the goal here. The Mirana is trying com coming from the side, of course. Getting the right clicks in. And oh my god, they just go here on that replicate. But Kingdom... They have to look for a nice opening. The problem is, how can you open on it? The problem is, oh, Brewmaster here actually getting the hacks as well as the Raining Rift, and he's gonna die again. This Brewmaster didn't do a primal split in probably the last 30 minutes. It's absolutely insane. You can't put your Brewmaster in the front lines. This is like a big misplay by Insidious Idol. Like, I'm absolutely. Yeah, for real. This is. How can I say this? I'm trying to put this in words that I don't sound biased, but I think Insidious Idol could have won this game or made it at least into a better position if that Brewmaster was second in line instead of first. Because each and every time, and we saw this now three times in a row, the Brewmaster is getting open on, there's a Hex, now the Hex actually was up and before it was only the Waning Rift into the double stun of Burrow Strike and Hoof Stomp, which got him down every time before he gets the Primal Split off. And this cost them so many fights, and even without the Brewmaster, they were like half time winning those fights. And I don't know, like just put that Brave King in the front line, let him get initiated on, maybe even burst it down. So he's using his reincarnation, slowing them down, and then the Brewmaster can come in, Thunderclap into Primal Split, and then getting the setup for Mirana for the right clicks, and of course Tinker for his Magic Burst. I think this would be the wisest choice, but so far that Brewmaster so often getting caught out of position. That's the biggest problem. And yeah, the viewers say he needs a he needs a hex stick. A uh, hex stick. What did I say? Sheep stick, of course. <laughs> a hex or a sheep stick, not a hex stick. But actually, it would work as well. It could also be a hex stick. But either way, he's not going for it. And the problem is, like, if he's going for it, I guess he has to sell the soaring. To be honest, the mana pool he has at the moment, as well as the bloodstone, of course, this uh, would not be too much of a loss. Even though sometimes in a, in a heavy team fight, when you don't have the opportunity to go forth and back between base, then. Yeah, you find yourself at the end of your mana pool, but I guess the soul ring is gonna be sold and it's yeah, the mystic stuff is gonna be the first step. So he's like seven hundred gold away from the first part of the hex. Let's see when it's coming out and let's see on what he's using it because the morphling, well he is BKB protected. There's seven seconds left on this BKB. I guess other targets are important. For example, the puck is at the moment making all the plays. If he gets like an instant sheep on the puck when he's, for example, coming in before he gets his hex off, etc., then this will definitely be interesting. What's also interesting is now the puck is actually saving up quite some gold. I don't know, maybe he's gonna go into BOTs because he still has brown boots. Well, he finished the hex instead of going for more Dagons, but I guess with this gold, you can actually at least upgrade to Dagon level 2. But maybe he's not even interested in to going for the heavy burst. Now on the Morphling, we're gonna see Eye of Skadi. So finally he's getting even more and more stats. But now, this is a bait. Rave King and Rubik waiting here and the Panda. Oh Panda, you don't wanna be there. You just don't wanna be there. Now he's TPing out. Yep, that's the wisest choice. We saw a smoke now. All five are smoked up. And this might actually be the game deciding fight. We have to look at the buybacks. Oh actually no, there's an entire... 
army of buybacks still available, but oh my god, they find the Tinker. There's the Waiting Rift as well as the Ice Blast and of course the Morphling. He didn't even need to do anything. Now, they even do some nice dewarding here. And this now with the Tinker, of course, we have to check. Tinker buyback would be available. So, yeah, at some point the Mirana at the moment is split pushing here in the mid. Theoretically, he could give the Mjolnir buff to one of the creeps and then just leave for the base to defend it. So that would be already enough to do at least some tier 3 damage, but yeah, he stays there himself. I guess doing some damage here on the tier 3 tower, so Kingdom has to be aware of the fact that they might lose that tier 3 if they completely stay here. So they try to force someone back, and the funny part is the Tinker is not using his buyback because he has the Bloodstone. I mean, it was only 8 charges, I think. No, it was 6 charges, or 7 charges. I think he used something there, like he had to, minus 1. But either way, now the Morphling is chewing through that tower. The tower is actually going down and the Rave King dying the first time now with Blade May up. The Morphling is still going for it and look with the Eye of Scotty. Like there's no chance for him at all to get him out. And now there's actually a nice opening here on the Tinker. But the Tinker, uh, he's definitely getting out of here. Primal Sprit is now holding the Santa Warner in place. Are the Santa still alive? Mirana getting now a kill on the Ancient Apparition who was in charge of defending. But now the Mirana is actually TPing out and the fight is still continuing here in the base. The Brewmaster eventually getting the kill on the center. The question is what happens to the Morphling. At the moment, the Tinker is trying to do some burst, but oh my god, he is a bit more powerful than you are, Tinker, and in the end, he's gonna get that kill. He's strength morphing and TPing out at the same time. It's gonna be enough. Jesus Christ, so much stats. Look at this. He had 3.4k at some point, and look at his gold. He just spiraled up in gold. This is just sick. 30k he got 30k and it takes like half an hour till he is finally full HP even if he stands in the fountain with 92.6 HPS this is pretty much crazy and I don't know what is he going for to be honest for him MKB wouldn't be too much of a bad choice because then he could kill the panda even better but I mean the panda has been so far no threat whatsoever I mean he got the kill on the center there but if Morphling wanted to he could even go just for the Brulings to kill them so, at the moment, the only one who's going against this immense farm on the Morphling is pretty much the Tinker with 24k, but we just saw it. Even the Tinker, with the support of Wraith King and Rubik, they couldn't burst uh, the Morphling down. They need a lot of right click and a lot of stuns to keep him in place, because he, with the Morph he does at the moment in strength into like up to 4k, that's insane because they need so many stuns otherwise he's just waiting till like uh, the the Mirana arrow is out or the ray fire blast is out or the telekinesis is out and then he's just TPing away and there's nothing you can do because you chew through 4k HP that's not an easy task to do and there's a discussion still going on about bloodstones oh god Guys, Bloodstone, Bloodstone. I mean, so far the Bloodstone was okay on the Tinker, um, at least in this game, but I said it when he bought it. I'm not so sure if he actually gets the charges up, but I mean, this is now due to the game being like semi lost now. The Morphling actually might be caught out alone, and there's actually nice Thunderclap as well as, Ray, as, well as the Ray Fire Plus, but he's morphing into strength. It takes them ages to get that morph down, but it's funny. He's not even down because he used his replicate and he makes it out. It's just crazy. There is actually... Oh my god. We saw this in the Chinese qualifier. I'm so happy he didn't morph into agility because there were some globals coming from the Mirana. So that would have killed him. We saw this in... I, I don't know what Chinese qualifier it was. But like a Morphling actually got out and then a projectile of a Rubik or a Mirana or something followed him into the base. But he was already in the base and was like, yeah, yeah, no problem. I can... I can already morph into agility and then yeah the projectile came into the base and just killed him right there but this morphling is smarter but still we have 51 minutes in like I think we only had uh, two Roshans or was it even the first Roshan I'm not sure we're gonna see it pretty much soon yep in, in like a minute or well, actually in a minute we know how much it is of the bonus time but let's see if this is gonna be cheese Roshan it's funny, I can't even remember, because the first Ro Roshan was so contested, so I have no idea if we actually finish this one off, but I think it should be the third one. Either way, it's time for crafts again, and this time, yeah, 
Kingdom starting to actually look decent with the Morphling. But still, it took them like the last 20 minutes pretty much of fighting and good team fights to get this advantage. Before, it was like all around like 2k where it's, yeah, where you can't really tell who's winning the game. The fact is, 8k to make the short 8k in experience and only 2k in gold. So the gold is actually quite surprising. I guess it's due to the fact that the rest of Kingdom is not farming as well as the Morphling, of course. I mean, <laughs> that Sand King now having a Heart of Tarrasque, it's... I don't know. I don't like it. I have to say it. I don't like it. I mean, cool, yeah, you got a Heart of Tarrasque, that's... <sighs> it's it's a nice HP pool, nice region, of course, but... I imagine this Sand King having instead a Ganem Scepter for a nice epicenter, maybe a Veil of Discord for the burst even there and now. The Rave King actually in the front lines. Oh my god, he is he already dying? No, he uses the plate man and Morphling is just holding on for a second. But this second burst strike, right? yeah, this is definitely finishing him off. And now the Sand King being super low. He's actually getting finished off here by the Brewmaster. Now the Brewmaster going for cycling and stun on the same at the same time. So Rave King is going down after his reincarnation. The Brewmaster still in pursuit. The Mirada actually being in the mid and get, getting the racks down. I have to show this really fast. And the Moonlight Shadow protecting at the moment. The Radiant team, but now it's running out, and the Morphling will just turn around. He has the MKB I was already talking about, so Brewmaster evasion is nothing he has to fear. The Rubik will go down for sure, I guess, because the Cold Free proc. But no, the Morphling is actually getting bursted down by the Tinker. Level 5 Dagon with the Eternal Blade. What burst damage there on the Morphling, and I think he was a bit too far into agility. So in the end, Kingdom is losing the racks here. Completely. Mirana is, I think, also doing some damage here on the tier 3 tower before he TP'd out. There is actually Ice Pass flying into the base, but everybody's like watching it. But no one was anyway in range of, or shatter range whatsoever. So, absolutely interesting. And now, actually, the Tinker, he tried to rearm, but gets instantly hexed by the Puck. But the Puck has to actually care. Uh, Blink, Dagon, for example, that might be dangerous. He only got 800 HP, but the problem is Tinker, not enough mana pool. I hope the Tinker was in range for Bloodstone charges here. Yes, he got at least two Bloodstone charges for uh, those kills on AA and the Morphling. So, well, Insidious Idol striking back. Absolutely interesting. This game, it's... I don't know. I actually thought Kingdom is, is going to have this pretty much with this high ground push. But in the end, they end up losing Arax. And look at this. I mean, okay, some damage done. The mid tier 2 tower is still standing and there was no pressure of kingdom whatsoever. Plus here the tier 3 went down but then they fought here around in this area all the time. Th and no one actually focused on the racks. And just with the morph being the only focus target and even in City's Idol they didn't even have to use buybacks so far to defend their high crown. So there's a lot of resources they still haven't done. And well, it's, it's getting dangerous because also the Marana. Getting more and more right click. Look at this. There's a Monkey King bar as well as a Daedalus. The the Panda we already saw it. I mean, he does not have too much of item progression. I mean, he is like number five here in the net worth. He should get a lot more. I mean, he having like the heart instead of, for example, the SK. This is something I'd understand. He needs a higher HP pool because of the shotgun. But also the Rave King now actually getting quite... Uh, some nice farm like as a support it is about time like he's soon overtaking uh, the SK here if he starts to get some damage items then Kingdom has a problem but yeah this Rave King the problem is he's not tanky enough for the front lines I mean the plate mail etc makes the Morphling mostly stop uh, attacking him directly but as soon as the plate mail is gone there's just so many ways of killing him that's the problem so he needs I don't know some some proper strength item to boost his HP, something, I don't know, that lifts him above the 2k, 2 point something k, so that he would survive the shotgun burst. So many questionable item choices of USS, and oh well, <laughs> I have to agree, I mean, the, the funny thing is, I, I've, I've been talking about the bloodstone of the Tinker so much, but like, in some situations, this bloodstone actually made quite a difference, but now, we actually have a man fight here, Tinker versus Morphling, but the Morphling, well, he has not really a chance, to be honest, but now, with his Stampede, this Morphling is going down, the Tinker is just prevailing with rearm into hacks, into, uh, say, Eternal Plate, Dagon, 
This is pretty much crazy. I absolutely love it. Like the damage combination is sick. The morphling going down, ending up, I don't know, being somewhere around uh, <laughs> the agility mark where he has like, I don't know, 1500 HP. That's just not enough. You get burst down by the Tinker. That's the funny part. Tinker being at the moment the more dangerous shotgun than the morphling. And the morphling, by the way, he bought a second BKB. I mean, look at this. There is a four second, no, actually, it's a five seconds BKB in the stash. And his 10 second one newly picked up and Roshan, look at this big pick. That was a huge one. And another one. Tinker can just rearm it and there's another one. Big pick is just getting slaughtered and Mirana is gonna be the one who's getting the ages. There's an ice blast. It's gonna no, it's just connecting actually on the Rubik, but he doesn't really care because he has tranquil boots. By the time they're gonna say hello to the high ground, he's gonna be full HP. But do they even say hello to the high ground? That's that's the question. Oh, but right now I can check if what Roshan that was. And this was the second Roshan, I was right. So, they didn't kill the first one. It was not killed after they contested it so heavily. So, yeah, no cheese in Roshan means this is the second one. And I can still count, glad. Because otherwise I would have been like, oh god, Haflamauk is your first cast and you already can't count to three or two in this case. Either way, Insidious Idol. They're saying hello. They want to go high ground. They say like, hey guys, it's time. We have the advantage. We're only two kills behind. But when it comes to farm, our Tinker is doing very well against the Morphling. Then again, in an all-out fight, if Kingdom does it right, I mean, a nice epicenter, nice ice blast on multiple targets, etc. And the Morphling staying alive, that would actually make quite a difference. And look at this. One adaptive strike is like a third of his HP here for the Wraith King. And this was without the shotgun. And I like it, th because the Morphling has to be careful with his shotgun. It's so hilarious, because if he shotguns someone, he actually might get hexed and Dagon right after by the Tinker and getting all this additional damage, which is nuts. Looking fast at the crafts, Insidious Idol taking over XP lead, and also the gold lead, heading towards 3k, and they're still here in front of the tier 3 tower. Rev King at the moment, he's the one tanking it, being in the front lines, so they learn from the Brewmaster always dying there. And the good thing is the Tinker at the same time, well, he's pushing now in the mid. I actually thought he's going to push that top. But now, yep, Morphling would have waited there. To be honest, I think they should split push. They should bring all the lanes close to the to the base. In the mid, we have Empowered Creeps here. They're going to head forward to the tier 4 towers, which means they have to swap in, which is now, of course, the puck. He has to make these rotations with Orb. He can at least drag them. Now, the Centaur actually pushed out the lane a bit. But so far, Insidious Idol not moving. At least maybe some harass damage from that adaptive strike. And now, oh my god, the, he's so down. The Morphling is just exploding. And now it's going for a real fight. Primal Sprint is up as well as the Ice Blast is flying. And now there's another Hex on the center Warren and the right clicks are coming. As well as all the bursts. And Ancient Apparition is the next one. And the Tinker, the Tinker is out of money. He has to go back. But the rest of the team, they are still fighting the Morphling. Of course, he bought back and now he's going through the last ruling. but the problem is, there's no mana on the Tinker at the moment, so Morphling with the Strength Morph, he's surviving, but there's another Dagon and he's still morphing into Strength. Still not enough. Ray Fire Blast is coming up, but they have no right click whatsoever and there finally, there is the Epicenter cleaning up and the Tinker is the only one who made it out. I mean, he has now 11 charges on the plus stone. This is, anyway, it would have been a fast respawn. The good thing is he can pressure this stuff, I mean, still quite heavily. So they have to keep someone here in that bottom lane at least, as well as in the top lane. This is going to be soon pushed out by the Tinker as well. But the fact is, they, they could hold their high ground. The tower, well, lost quite a chunk of HP there. But the important thing is they almost team wiped in ZDSC. And the main reason, and that's the funny part, is the carry Tinker here was out of mana. That was the only reason. He was just out of mana, otherwise they would have killed that morph again after his buyback and this would have been a GG. But like, I think he had four or five hexes as well as four Dagons in this fight and then at some point your mana is just depleted. Even as a Tinker with this farm being level 24 now, he's gonna be soon level uh, 25 and his entire team is gonna respawn. But I wanna see on the crafts what an impact this fight had. Wow, okay. Even with all this, like the buybacks, like the the experience craft was still climbing for in CDC. Of course, there were a couple buybacks, and even in gold they are climbing. So I actually thought with four heroes down of in, in CDC, including some uh, killing sprees and uh, dominating streaks, 
I thought that Kingdom is gonna get some gold out of it, but in the end, with the buybacks and everything, well, it, it wasn't too much of a gold boost for that. In CDC is still climbing, of course the Tinker farming all the time as well, pushing out the lanes, and we are pretty much at status quo. Like, nothing really changed except for the tier 3 tower losing some HP, which means he will maybe going down in the next push. So, let's see what they're doing. The problem is for Kingdom, I think we are kind of past the point where they can go and push high ground on the other side. Because whenever they're going to leave their base, the Tinker is going to make sure that each and every creep wave is going to be pushed beyond the river line or even closer to the base. Unless they get the Tinker caught out, I don't see any any way of King Kingdom leaving their base in, the, in, I don't know, in the next hour, pretty much, till that game is over eventually by Slow Siege. So, at the moment, I don't think we have to wait an hour to get the result of this game because there's already a double marching machine saying hello, but oh, they want to go aggressive. There's the Barrow Strike on two actually, but the Marana used the BKB and now what a huge clash. This Ice Pass actually hitting on so many and now they're chewing through the Primal Spread, but the funny part is you can... Oh my god, he actually killed the Proling, the Tinker was TPing on now, the Tinker actually, he's going for the SK. The problem is now Morphling being focused down again and Brewmaster was still alive there's the another Dagon and I think now we are looking at a GG we have to look at the buybacks and buyback status not available for anything they have to GG out these racks will go so fast down even with the cliff buying some time no way whatsoever either way Insidious Idol Tinker stronger than Morphling pretty much at least in this case I think in other circumstances and better pushes and better item decisions for Kingdom there it would have made a difference but the fact is they waited so long till the Tinker could actually like spam sheep your carry even with buying a new BKB etc like all the kiting etc just worked out and either way this is a two game series guys so game two will be up and the question is can kingdom strike back and are the drafts just as exotic as they were in game one i mean game one was exciting and it was super long 63 minutes let's see how game two is gonna be my name is heflamo caster of hafla tv as well as of course the manager and yeah i'm glad i'm back to casting at least for today and for tomorrow and i hope some people are happy that i'm here as well and yeah waiting screen some music game two will be up in a second